and welcome to Whose Line Is It Anyway, which is a series of improvisational, improvisational yeah. games. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just improvising a mistake there to make it all seem genuine. <laughs> improvisational games to be acted out by some of the wittiest and cleverest people in the land. Or in the case of this show, by the usual collection of deadbeat entertainers, uh, stand-up comics and friends of the producer. Uh, now, our first competitor on tonight is the American uh, actor and comedian Archie Hahn, who is, I've uh, just been told, uh, very big on the West Coast, which should please our Cornish viewers. <laughs> and then, then we have uh, Rory Bremner, well known, of course, for his having the skills of a great impressionist, the looks of a pre-Raphaelite and the, the mind of a primitive. <laughs> uh, and then we have Jimmy Mulville, whose sharp comedy skill and creative performing ability he really ought to make use of sometime in his <laughs> show, <laughs> Who Dares Wins. And finally, we have our regular John Sessions, who only today was described in these words, a genius with a talent unmatched by any contemporary. In fact, I'm absolutely marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, well, those are the competitors. So let's get on to our first game, which is also a regular, and it's called uh, Authors. And it's called that because each of the competitors has come on with in mind the style of a favourite uh, famous author. So if you'd like to come forward now, you competitors, and um, in a moment I'm going to get the title for a story to be told, a title from somebody in the studio audience, and then Archie will start off telling that story in the style of his author, and then when I buzz my buzzer, like that, we'll move on to Rory, and he'll continue the same story, picking up from the moment that Archie left it, but in the style of his author. So first of all, let's just discover which authors you're going to go for. Uh, Archie, who's your author this week? Well, I like very much to do Truman Capote. <laughs> Truman Capote. But you'll do it in his voice, will you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 Rory. I'm going to do Clive James. Clive James, why not? And uh, Jimmy? Um, who was it? <laughs> have, have you read anybody ever? No, <laughs> I... <laughs> I was going to read that. Oh, yes. Um, Dylan Thomas, I think. Dylan Thomas, yes. yes. Uh, and John. James Joyce. James Joyce. Well, we've all read no. the first two pages of him. <laughs> so, can we, have, um, can we have a suggestion for the title of a story from some... A Day at the Seaside. Sorry? A Day at the Seaside. A Day at the Seaside. An inspired choice there. That, uh, <laughs> dull, but uh, that'll do. Now, A Day at the Seaside, therefore, is the title suggested by the gentleman in the blue shirt at the front there. Uh, so, we'd like to start, Archie, in the style of Truman Capote. A Day at the Seaside was something I had looked forward to for a number of days. <laughs> It started out on a tenuous note when I found a pubic hair in my toothbrush. <laughs> it was obvious to me that Frank Sinatra was completely smashed. <laughs> Thus necessitating another 2,000 mile journey to find another beach the other side of the American coastline. <laughs> That was a very good Truman Capote. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it was a very nice coastline. It was black, Bible black, slow black, black, <laughs> black, quick, quick, slow black. <laughs> black, black, the black of the eyes, the eyes going closer and closer and lower, and ah, yes, the tongue inside me, yes. <laughs> and oh, I said, and oh, again, I said, and yes, the spades were getting brighter, yes. The bucket's higher, the lighthouse getting up and bright as the alt altere day, there as the cross of the crucifix of the Rose of Mary up on the hill, and yes, I said, as he went inside me, and yes, yes, I said, I'm at Blackpool. <laughs> I had often had a fascination with black men, but this was the first time I had actually experienced one. <laughs> And by experiencing one, he meant something which I was only to find out by travelling another 5,000 miles <laughs> to another location in another country. Another country. I'm going Pakistani. <laughs> another country. <laughs> another country. He went, he went past the shops down the lane, past the shops which sold the pink bread, the blue bread, the black bread. <laughs> it was, in fact, dye the bread. <laughs> 
break. <laughs> Die the bread and don't you know what haven't I told you? Every tailing is a telling and a beach is a beaching and a batch is a bitching of a botch. <laughs> there I'm telling you, ah, now don't you tell me this or quote me that or bring me more a bucket of this and that and t'other. I'll put my sand in you, me latterly scholar. Up and down I will upon the sand and there with the shells, the seashells, the seashells. I score shell and shell and I and I and I know the bell stop there, stop I. Thank you very much. Thank you. End there. That's the end of that game. Uh, Well, that's the end of the opening round. I have to award some points for this and other games, and I think I can give everybody ten. Uh, apart from Archie, I'll have to deduct five from you for uh, using pubic hair right at the beginning there. <laughs> so, we'll go on to the next game, which is called Film and Theatre Styles, for the simple reason that we uh, give the people, uh, the competitors acting in pairs, a number of different film and theatre styles. <laughs> I don't know, I'm talking gibberish, aren't I? We give the people a number of film and theatre styles to improvise in, and I'll do that by getting some suggestions from the studio audience. First of all, we go with Archie and Jimmy working together, and I'll give you a situation in a moment. But can we have some theatre and film styles Godfather. that... Sorry? Godfather. Godfather. I'll take that. It's not really a style, that's just Horror. one film. Yeah. Sorry, hang on, hang on. Horror. Horror, yes. Horror. <laughs> Japanese, all right. Australian soap. Okay, well, we've got a, ba a batch there to choose from. So, can you start off just improvising, Archie and Jimmy? And the scene we'd like you to improvise is sacking an employee. Okay, got that? You must have been through that, I thought, Jimmy, a few no. times. <laughs> um. And uh, I'll buzz you when we want to introduce a different style. Yeah, do. Can we do sacking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've got, uh, you know, up to nine yeah, hours to get on with it. Uh. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm sorry. I'm going yeah. to have to let you go. It's as simple as that. I don't know any other way out of this predicament. Look, just, I mean, just give me another break, because I mean... I have given you break. I was late, okay, I was late yesterday. Okay, Godfather, in the style of the Godfather. You understand what I'm saying? No. <laughs> Let me see if I can put it to you more clearly. <laughs> Where's the door? Well, listen, Godfather. Godfather. I've worked for you for how many years for you and the family? 22 years. I raised you from a little baby. A, a little baby. <laughs> a little baby? <laughs> little baby. Why are you talking Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have uh, Aussie soap, Australian soap. All right, mate. Yep. You're fine. Stop <laughs> <laughs> <Uh> off. <laughs> Hi. You've been on one of those bloody management courses, haven't you? That's right. <laughs> right, let's throw in on the barbie and we'll talk about it. <laughs> You're going Chinese again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, end on horror. We see... We, we... <laughs> 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 yes, thank you very much. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that was very good. I'll give 20 points each there. And so we now go on to the other pair, John and Rory. Uh, can you step forward uh, for your scene in a minute? And a few more suggestions of theatre and film. Dramatics. Amateur dramatics. I think we, we get a lot of that as it is, but... Uh, Spaghetti Western. Sorry, Brazilian soap yeah. opera. <laughs> what? So are you on, are you on any particular med medication or something for you? Okay. <laughs> Travelogue. Oh, what a... Rogers and Hammerstein. OK. Porn film, yeah. Um, Noel Card. Noel Card, yes. That's a good one. What about a porn film? Tommy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're too quick. I'll make you no good in a porn film. Now, let's, um, <laughs> let's get going on that then. And your, your style, I've got to give you something to do. What is it? Uh, yes, the, uh, imp the scene we'd like you to improvise is the, a used car salesman. So you on see. you go, and I'll give you, I'll give you a style to get into once we get going. You see, you think you're looking at a Riley or a Bentley, but actually you're looking at the car in which Dracula, Elizabeth I and Harold I of England drove. Well, yeah, I, I, like, I like the wooden bits, and I thought that maybe... You know... All right, go into amateur dramaticals, please. What's going on here? Oh, oh, oh. This car, this car is mine! This car is mine, not yours! <laughs> you want it? Because I bought it yesterday. <laughs> because I 
because I bought it yesterday when you brought it in here. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. <laughs> you did, you know. Yeah. As sure uh, as I'm looking at you, you. Hang you. On, I'm... Can we that... now go into Brazil? Can you listen to the buzzer? It's, uh, <laughs> can we go into Brazilian soap opera? I know what, I, what it means, but. Uh... You're talking a load of rubbish. <laughs> You must have realised that this car is a complete load of rubbish. You call this modern? You're an old slow coach, that's what you want. <laughs> I'll take it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, why don't you finish on doing a null card? It's ridiculously, precisely, beautifully, absolutely and appositely the motor car that you want. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> Has it got ashtrays? There's ashtrays everywhere. It's absolutely regulated with old and out-of-date cigarettes that might be dashed and flashed into the dash. Then why don't you use the bloody ashtrays instead of leaving ash on my carpet? Why am I talking like this? Because I'm a, <laughs> because I'm a 1920s old whoopsie and I can do what I like. Thank you very much. End on that. Thank you. Uh, well, I would say 50 points each there for Rory and John. And we now go into the next game, which is called The World's Worst. And this should be a quick-fire round. If you'd like to come forward and stand on the World's Worst step. And uh, the idea of this is the contestants just step forward when they think of an idea, as many as they can think of in quick succession, coming forward to be the world's worst person to comfort somebody on their deathbed. <laughs> so, a lot, lot of points are going to stake on this round. And on you go. Yes? Um, hello, I I I'm Desmond Wilcox. We're filming a documentary and... Uh, <laughs> Well, Mr. Sampson, um, of course, you only have 20 hours to live. Listen, we'd like to ask a favor. Some of the interns need some experience in giving an enema. <laughs> Would you mind if you... <laughs> Uncle Jack, it's Tommy. I come all the way from California. I'm hitching around Europe. Is it okay when you're dead if I can sleep in your bed? Because there's no one to sleep around here. <laughs> okay? Well, look on the bright side, Terry. <laughs> I mean, at least you won't have to watch England in the next bleeding World Cup, will you? Well, there's uh, good news and there's bad news. Uh, the bad news is you only have six hours to live. The good news is, though, you won the Irish sweepstakes, $23 million. <laughs> you ticklish. You ticklish, aren't you? I'll bet you are. <laughs> David Johnson, BBC News. How does it feel to be dying? <laughs> you haven't seen Star Wars? Oh, well. Ben Kenobi um, arrives back from the planet <laughs> and, um... I bet you feel stupid being a bloody atheist now, don't you, eh? <laughs> Is that it? Any oh, more? Right. Oh, yeah, another one. One more song before you die. <laughs> <laughs> I met a girl <laughs> who sang in a song that had 95 verses to go. <laughs> Yeah. Lovely. Look, Dad, I know with, you know, male chauvinism and all that and how men aren't supposed to be able to express themselves emotionally, well, I just want to tell you that I, th I think you're a son of a bitch. You took every chance I had away. I don't know. Oh, good steak. Oh. So don't forget, you ever need life insurance, here's the card. <laughs> I think... You look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well, <laughs> I think that's a, a good enough note to end on for the moment. We stop, <laughs> stop improvising for now while we go away and some premeditated advertising takes place. We'll be back in a moment. Goodbye. <laughs> Welcome back, and I decided to give 30 points to everybody for that uh, last game. <laughs> now, this next game involves some props, and again, the contestants will be acting in pairs, and the first pair will be Jimmy and Rory. Can you step forward? And I'll yes. give you an item, which is this item. <laughs> and 
You've got to come up with as many different ways of using that item as possible. <laughs> and we'll alternate to the other pair, who are uh, obviously need Benny John and Archie. <laughs> and that's your item. Okay. And you've got the uh, same, same idea. You've got to come up with as many things as you can with that item. And we'll go between the two of you, the two pairs of you, using the buzzer as before. So starting with uh, Jimmy and Rory, have a nice ring to it. Uh, Sorry, are you, you leaving? No. No, no. <laughs> you were coming towards me with that. So. <laughs> this this our camera? Hi. OK, on you go. <laughs> now. <laughs> I done it! I brought the Olympic torch all the way to Tokyo! It's gone out! Tokyo! <laughs> oh, shit! Sorry, that's a bit of racist. <laughs> Woo, wow, whoa. Mm. <laughs> Not funny, but clean. <laughs> <laughs> clean, clean. OK, um... Hang on. Well... I went in, I, I said, I want one like Michael Jackson's. <laughs> you're smart, you're there, you're together. You gotta go to the office, you wear a smart suit and a tie. It'll brush this way, it'll brush that way. And if you take it into a club at night, you can sing like Johnny Burnett. Particularly <laughs> <laughs> incomprehensible. For the extrovert dunce in your life. <laughs> So, um, you want the eagle? You want the eagle with uh, bracelets on its claws? I want Betty, Betty, sit on me anywhere. <laughs> uh, for the monoped who wants to be seen at night. <laughs> so, I've, uh, I've only had it about, uh, about eight months. It works fine. Here, I'll just start it up for you. <laughs> Taiwan, right? If you've got any other ideas for gags about this, just send them in on a postcard, will you? <laughs> I can't think of any! One more from you two. It's a Polish dryer. <laughs> uh, OK, Mr. President, the election is over. Will you please come out of the White House? <laughs> now you have no chance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's have these props back. Thanks a lot. Good one. Good one. Good one. Well, I think it would be invidious to give any fewer marks than 50 each there, so I'll give 10. Uh, now we come to a, a round called Different Games because different games are played in the round. The first pair to go in this one are Archie and Jimmy, and they're going to play a game based on sound effects. I'm going to get the suggestion from a member of the studio audience for an everyday activity, and Jimmy is going to act that out while Archie will be providing some sound effects for it. So Go I'll give see. Archie a microphone to do that with. Thank you. And uh, what were you an everyday activity you can think of? To... <laughs> Eating your breakfast? Well, it's some... Watching television. Watching television. That's I think that could... yeah. Something with plenty of different <laughs> things in it. <laughs> Having a bath. Oh, Having a bath. Oh, Wait a minute. One, one, <laughs> one at a time, please. Oh, Having a bath. Having a bath. I want an everyday activity, not just a once a month one. What's... <laughs> Sorry? Mowing the, mowing the lawn. Well, mowing the lawn, doing the garden generally. I think that's a... Jim will be miming this and acting it out while well, some sound effects yeah. provided by Archie. On you go now. Ten points to Jimmy, very, very good, I like that, and uh, 100 points to Archie. So, <laughs> Rory and... Um, who else have we got left? Rory and John, of course. Uh, another game for you, and uh, your, this game is called Couples. 
We're going to give you a little scene to improvise in, and then we'll get suggestions from the audience for couples who you might be playing while you're improvising the scene. Make any sense at all, does it? Um, so <laughs> the scene we'd like you to improvise is uh, two people in a laundrette. OK? Two people in a laundrette. And the couple we'd like to set you off with is uh, David Attenborough and his brother Richard Attenborough. So you can sort out which is which. I can't imagine they go to the laundrette that often, <laughs> least of all together. I'm not saying they've got dirty clothing or anything like that, but... Uh... It's blinking rotating, isn't it? And so... It's going to explode, we're all going to die! <laughs> An example of I... primitive panic. Oh, I don't want to die! A reaction which sets in in many mammals and indeed some invertebrates, giving rise to the expression, spineless bastard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, another couple that either belong together or don't belong together. Charles and Diana, OK. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're going to change their names in the middle. Charles and Diana. You do, Charlie. Is he, um... <laughs> do you think Harry's having a nice time in there? <laughs> Take a walk, wing nut head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another, another couple. Melon Griff. I've heard of Melon Griff. I think. Can you, can Mel Smith Yes, 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 Mel Smith and Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I have heard of him. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, um, Mel here. Uh, some... And Griff here. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, would like to do a show for you. Um, um, yeah. can, can I just, um, point out here? Please. Thank you, Mel. Um, that's... <laughs> I think what Mel's trying to say is that um, he um, is trying to dominate the show uh, once again this week. Oh, well, another couple like that. That was a very good one. Hang on. Wait a minute. No, there's, there's, there's a man there with designer ugly beard and he wants to say something. Ron and Nancy. Ron and Nancy. Yes, all right. Yes, there are a couple. <laughs> Everyone thinks that the skin on my face is human skin. I've actually got a condom stretched over my head. <laughs> Ronnie, how many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, one, one more to end on. <laughs> Sorvel and Dean. Oh, brilliant, yes. <laughs> it's yeah. five hours to get the ice rink set up. <laughs> There's somebody who can speak. <laughs> Well, I, I, I thought that was very good. I'll give 150 points each. It, it would have been more had they mentioned the laundrette ever in the course of that uh, improvising. It's wonderful how they stick to the rules, isn't it? Now, that was, in fact, the last game, so I'll total up the scores, and I see that Rory Bremner is this week's winner. So, well done, Rory. Uh, and, and the... The, uh, the prize for winning is to get to read out the credits as they roll by in a style of my selection, and I'm going to give Rory a difficult one here. I'm going to him to do it in the style of Barry Norman. I don't know if he's ever done that, but uh, <laughs> let him try it out. So it just remains for me to thank our competitors, which is Archie Hahn, uh, Rory Bremner, Jimmy Mulville, John Sessions. This is me, Clive Anderson, saying good night. Good night. Whose line is it anyway? It was devised and compiled by Dan Patterson and Mark Lewis from Scott Clark Anderson, John Sessions with Rory Bremner, Archie Hahn, Jimmy Melville, which is Raj. Title music and nice music was was by Philip Pope. The sound singer was Chris Blake, vision mixer Ross Story, floor manager Hilary Bevan Jones. Stage manager was Hilary Groves, costume designer and a rather excellent production, which I in fact enjoyed most of the way through until the second half. Indeed, the second half I thought was rubbish, still I liked it, so then. Anyway, back now to the lighting director, who is Michael Lingard. And in the view, why not? Director was Paul Adele, the executive producer Dean Ezio Donoghue, and the whole thing was produced. And indeed, well, the whole thing was produced. Oh, by Dan Patterson. And why not? <laughs>